squeeze his little head. Two pieces. There is no dang way. What? Yes! Awesome! <clears throat> For sure. Let him get wet Every, wet. Everything in the ecosystem has a purpose. Hello, double O crew. Welcome to Obsession Outdoors. Got the masturbator out here. We're in our old favorite little honey hole spot. Spot right here. He's got the, the fly rod. Try for some smallmouth, and we're also going to load up on bait for blue cats. Great for herping here, too. Let's see what we can do. Shout out to the uh, subscriber that we ran into at the bait shop on the way here. Always nice meeting you guys in person. First worm going in, first fish to be caught in the. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, take 2. There you go, that's the cat. That's the one. That's the cat. He's got it. He's got it. And that, boys and girls, is blue cat bait. Beautiful. Let's load up the bucket. All right, guys, next spot. And we are hammering some fish in here. Little update. What we got in a bucket. Looks like catfish bait to me. Watch that orange line tighten up. Well, bam, he on. Fish on. Fish on. More bait, boys. And gals. Followed by what? Nice. Okay, guys, back to the first hole. Alex panning for gold. He actually found some. Actually, let's look at that real quick. You got the gold handy? This is the third time, second or third time that you've actually been successful finding a piece of gold panning. Second. That's crazy. Piece of Maryland placer gold. I can pick it up. Hey, it's a picker. Can't even. It's it's barely it's picker. So thin. Yeah, it's it's barely picker sized. I don't know what that means, but picker is something you can pick up. Oh. Uh, so if you can pick it try up. Try to hold it on your fingertips so I can. It's, it's like almost a picker. There we go. Look at that, guys. Crazy. Panda in the stream. Anyway, aside from catching a full bucket of bait and some gold, we're ready to start the day catfishing tomorrow. All right, guys, Alec was just making the point that we might have the, or he technically, might have the first Maryland gold find on YouTube. I've seen two other people. Flesh Gold and the other guy, I can't remember, but... Flesh Gold was in Elkton, Maryland. The other guy was in a very undisclosed location, most likely private property, but virtually no one does gold panning in Maryland because there's barely any gold here. It's, it's not something you can make a profit off of. Huh. And this is how it's done? You just scoop it and then sift it like that? And then all the light what stuff what you're doing is falls you're washing out? off the, the light stuff on top, and then you're shaking it and using gravity and centrifugal forces to get the heavy material, the heavies, down to the bottom. They fall through all the lighter sands. The lighter stuff rises to the top, and you just wash that off. And then you just keep doing that until the gold exposes itself, hopefully. Well, you do that until you have about a spoon size of material. And then you sift through that? you It's called washing it back. I'll, I'll describe or I'll, I'll display what that looks like. And what these riffles do is they catch any heavy material, so you're, you can be a little bit rougher with it if you want. That's what she said. Brew. And now you can see the black sand. Uh, okay. That's metallics. That's all heavy stuff. Usually hematite and things like that. Some of it's probably magnetic, some of it's non-magnetic, but you don't want to use a magnet on concentrates anyway unless you have a, uh, unless it's dry. Huh. Otherwise you'll risk sucking the gold up with it. So nothing in this but metal then, basically? Or unless... Well, there's a little bit of that light sand you can see flowing around up top, and I'll try to bump that out of here real quick. But we got virtually a spoon size full of material. So make sure you have just enough water in here. What you're going to do is you're just going to create a little current. Oh, okay, and then it separates. Oh, that's cool as hell. Huh. 
So all the metal uh, material was left behind and all the lighter stuff gets rinsed away. This, and is, then just, you, this is just called jumping the gold? I was going to say, gold and then the gold is going to be trapped in the metal stuff? And look at that. <laughs> Are you serious right now? you got to be kidding me. Two pieces. There is no dang way. Well, what? Well, I did it a little bit hard that time. So you can see. So, when, hold on, hold on. You can see when you jump the gold like this. Uh, how many scoops was that? This was. I filled this up three times and took it down to concentrates from underneath this big boulder here. What you want to do is you want to go to an inside bend. You can see this is an inside bend of a stream. And you've got slopes on both sides of the stream dragging materials off all these rocks. And this rock is most likely filled with a lot of quartz and heavy metals that are oxidizing and it's shedding out of these rocks over here. You can see this whole wall. You can look on the camera. It's all, it's all shedding out of all of that behind us. And then what it does is when this stream floods, which Winter's Run does, if anybody knows winter, Winter's Run, the stream floods a lot. It takes a lot of that gold and other materials down into the stream and then it gets caught behind stuff like this where a uh, you can look on the camera here. Oh, sorry. I'm just fascinated at the damn gold. I can't believe you just found gold again. Like, that's stuff crazy. Stuff like this where the current breaks, this gives the gold a chance to sit and it gets underneath all this dirt, all this stuff here. All this sediment. And then you want to dig on that. What in the absolute world? How is this? Anyway, how many scoops was this? Three. No, no, not scoops. So you found? Three full pans. Oh. So yeah. if that's the case, you could do this for like an hour and you would have enough to sell. Not really. Why? This maybe weighs 0 0.1 grams, which is like two bucks. Oh, still. If that's two dollars worth, <laughs> okay, you could, and you found it that quick, there's got to be a good amount here. You could so. spend all day here and get about 20 bucks a gold, maybe. It's, it's, it's nothing you're going to create like a profit. So you just got super lucky with these finds, then. <clears throat> it's not going to be, you're not getting them in every scoop? No. But even so, look how paper thin they are. This is the kind of gold that Maryland has. Very thin gold. It's flakes. And gold is priced by the weight. So yes. That's crazy. So even though they look wide, they weigh virtually nothing. Oh, and it sucks it up. Yep. Huh. Insane. All right, guys, we got a water snake here. I'm going to try to catch it. There's two, actually. Okay, he's going. I'll tell you when to grab No. I said, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. No. Okay, there's a small there's one. one. Nice. I want that big one, though. Let's, one's... let's get him on camera and then let him go. And then we'll focus on the big one. Ow. Oh, you're feisty. You're fast to ball. Fast to ball. <clears throat> oh. That is must in the face. Oh, God. I, I don't want to lose focus and lose him, though. Oh. Come on, feisty boy. Sorry awesome. for the troubles. <sighs> Sorry to bother you in your perfect little spot here we're it's coming up on nighttime anyway they're getting ready to come out so now I know for a fact this one is not only going to bite me but it's large so it's not gonna feel too great but it's gonna be worth it for the catch here he comes God, he's got a freaking anaconda look <laughs> awesome look at how big he is Whew. I love big it's the first big water snake I've had since we've started herping Really? Every water snake we've caught has been tiny. Double hand him, see if he calms down. Since we started herping, every one. It's not bitey either, that's awesome. Heck yeah. Look at that belly. Let me hold it if you can. That is why I love big water snakes. Beautiful. We got a gold video, a herping video, and a fishing video out of today. This is awesome. Yeah, I got his head so he doesn't strike that's it. That's so pretty. They are just designed to be predators, dude. Heck yeah. Hold him still if you can. Kind of hard to hold him still. You're right, he does have an anaconda look. I know, because he when they get big like that, they get that head shape. It looks like an anaconda almost. And these guys, the northern banded water snakes, are awesome. Like Alex said, they're super predators of the water. They pretty much eat whatever they can fit in their mouth. Apex. The definition of an apex predator right there. And they uh man, sorry for the shaky footage, I'm got adrenaline going through me. I love this. Uh these guys unfortunately are subject to a lot of slaughter because they're as you can see, the for cotton mouths. Cotton mouths, then copperheads, given the pattern on the side. You know, if you, if you are familiar with a copperhead, you know this isn't a copperhead. But if you've never seen one and you're misinformed, as you can see, once you calm a snake down, yeah. 
even the feisty water snakes. Once it realizes you're not trying to hurt it. Yeah. These things are harmless, guys. Well, not, not I one thing I don't like is when herpers call snakes harmless because it still hurts when they bite. That's oh, they're that's not harmless. That's causing Trust harm. Yes, that's definitely harmless. causing harm. But it's not and deadly. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill your kids yeah. and your dog. And it really doesn't hurt that bad, but no, it, I mean, it, this, it, it hurts, but this not This was not. a missed strike. He missed me. Only a couple right. teeth got me, but still. You know, it's it's something that you don't really fear once you've had it done to you once. You're like, okay, it hurts a little bit, and then... Right, right. So we do this, guys, as for fun, because it's awesome. We don't like stressing the snakes out too much, but as you can see, he's not really stressed. He's not freaking out. He's not... Mm, he calmed down very quickly. But mainly for awareness. It's... Uh, very one, important. One thing I want to do to really bring these colors out is let them get wet. <clears throat> For sure. Let them get wet. Every, everything in the ecosystem has a purpose. Love this rock. Always produced ever since I was a kid. There we go. Now you can see that pattern. Look how big that head is. I know. This fish right here can take on some of them sunfish that we were catching easy. Fish? <laughs> this snake right here can take <laughs> on some of them sunfish we were catching easy. Oh, definitely. A fall fish would be nothing They for could him. eat those shiners of the fall fish. Yeah. yeah. Any of the elongated. And look at that head. It's Like Alex said, it's so predatory. He's ready to hunt. And that's mostly what they're eating out here in this kind of ecosystem is fish largely. There's probably some little vermin around here, mice around the hills. All right, guys. Well, we've had a 10-minute encounter with this northern water snake now. We're going to let him back go, and he'll probably... He might stay in there, but most likely he'll fly on out and then go start hunting for the evening. Sorry to bother you. You letting us catch you is helping your species. Hopefully. That's the goal. Alright guys, out here. Damn River Boys, once again, Master Bader. We are going to be catching some catfish, hopefully. Alex never caught a blue cat, so that's the main goal. Get him his first blue cat today. Let's get to it. What does this remind you of? I just want to see if you say it before. It reminds me of flounder fishing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I said, thought the first time I did it. You just It's like drifting for flounder in Delaware. Alex, get him. Pull down after pull down. He's got one running with his bait right now. I'm going to see if he can get a hook set on it. Odd. Bobber just keeps coming back up. Yeah. Huh. Get back to you if he hooks in it. Looks into it. He's gonna be one of those as soon as he gets in close. Yep. Oh, this is Alex PB catfish, and his first blue ever. What did other guy bring towards him? I think it's only a little bit bigger than that baby I got earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, look at that thing! Heck yes. He can be netted. I think he's tired off for the most part. He tired. All right, guys. It took us three hours. We lost a little channel cat. Ooh, yes. Here we go. Lost a little channel cat about right when we first started. And now Alec is yes. Awesome. That's a tank. I'm guessing 19 pounds. Damn river boys. Figured it out. He called it. He said it all day. The water temps were key. We came up here to warmer water temps and almost immediately hooked up. This guy is the catfish king. See what his shirt says? Trust me, I'm the captain. <laughs> you can't catch a blue cat and not lip it, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. I'd say you're right. I'd say about 20 pounds. Here, let me get a... Careful, don't right don't drop him over. Stretch out, buddy. There you go. All right, you want to hold him up? Sure. Everybody, it's a goose cat. Here, we'll goose cat. Hear that, guys? Sounds like a dang goose. Doc wants to release hey, his first blue cat ever. To check out this underwater release, go to Dam River Boys channel. It's been a super slow day, but goal achieved. Alec got his first blue cat, and it was a monster. So. That's going to be the end of this video. Until next time, get out there and enjoy the outdoors. Peace.